Jake, you know who I hate in wrestling? Who, Scott? Nikolai Volkov, because he's not from here. Oh, but but Nikolai Volkov eventually became an American sympathizer. Yeah, you're right. I did like him when he did that. Well, you know who I really hate, though? Who? Rusev, because he's not from here either. Yeah, but Rusev, he won the U.S. title, and then he kind of became like a pro-USA unity Rusev Day guy. Okay, that's fair. I did like him when he did all that. But you know who I really hate? No, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. La Resistance, Rene Dupree and Sylvain Grenier. Oh, yeah, no, fuck those guys. Yeah, they're terrible wrestlers. Yeah, mostly the wrestling, yeah. Foreign Wrestling Bad Guys, today on Pro Wrestling Kowski's. Narver. Hey, Jiggly Bacon. Um, and hello to everybody out there in Palski land, especially those joining us live for the super exclusive patron only live stream. If you're listening to this and you say, hey, I want to watch it. I want to chat in real time. You got to become a patron over at patreon.com slash PW Palskis. And as always, we must acknowledge the current PWP world champ Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon for now who will be uh, defending that title later today in this very episode. That is correct. Today is the championship Palski battle Royal. Will Gilbert hang on to that title or will he not hang on to that title? Find out later. Could slip through his fingers. He might have to skin the cat riveting or to, or to maintain oh. his battle Royal after all. It is a battle royal, even though when we pick a winner, I play a pinning count. <laughs> well, I don't think too much into it. That's all I got to say. I don't. Um, Scott. Was there, no, was there no dog maneuver? You got to skin the cat, but there's no like. Uh, uh, you know, uh, no, there's uh, the. I don't know. Oh, wait. There is. Oh, the bulldog. There's a bulldog headlock. No, no, no. But skin the cat is a maneuver in order to stay in the ring. Right. But you're not then like, uh, you know, kicking the dog well, to get somebody out of it or something. People like dogs and people generally don't like cats. So you, you name something about murdering a cat and everybody goes, yeah, that sounds fine. But so it's uh, coming from a former cat owner. I, Is that how they want I away? don't approve of it. I love cats. I'm talking about who doesn't like cats. Everybody who has no problem with thus calling it skinning the cat, apparently. Uh, those probably those. People probably want to lube the dog. Oh, creeps! You, you cut out there for the live stream, and all we heard was those people probably want to lube, and then just a bunch of silence. The dog. They probably want to oh. lube the dog. Oh, uh, it was better when it was silence. Um, uh, Scott Narver. Speaking of not understanding one another. Did that work? That kind of works. That's what this whole show has been. That's what this whole show is. Today, uh, we're talking all about foreigners. Goddamn foreigners. It's about time we address the problems in this nation. No. uh, Listen, I've traveled abroad recently, and I'm still jet lagged. And I thought, hey. Does Alexandra know about this broad you've been traveling with? Uh, She is the broad. We just It's like a role-playing game that we do. Or she, we pretend like we're strangers. I- I get it. I would I would have to do that too to endure. Yep. Uh, I have to do it with myself every day just to look in the mirror. Today we are talking all about foreigner wrestler bad guys. It's a it's out of all of the pro wrestling tropes, this might be the most enduring. Like obviously we've got the contract signing, but I feel like that's newer. Um Yeah, that feels like a it was a very special thing in the 80s when you saw that on television. I can't speak to that much before that. Right. Um, but it was very rare in the 80s. And then in the late 90s, it started happening. Right. Attitude era stuff, I feel like. A little bit more. It still wasn't a lot. And then right. 
you get into your 2000s, good God, anything gets a fucking contract signing. 205 Live is going to be on the air coming up uh, after SmackDown. There's a contract signing to make sure that happens. Stay tuned. Um, what are some, what are some other pro wrestling tropes? Obviously the, the people waiting when you know, someone's going to come and make a save like that kind of moment where it's like, Oh, we all know someone's in the back and they're going to come out like some certain, certain run-in scenarios have become tropes. Um, okay. Certain characters like the, um, the, the cocky heel, the generic cocky heel, who's just better than everybody and thinks that they're smarter like these are all little tropes, but I feel like the 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 evil foreigner is like the biggest, most enduring trope of them all. It is a very it's it's a good way to get in the door. Yeah, it's a good way to have a, a reaction right away. Someone's like, "Hey, what are you? I don't know. Uh, you you want to be from somewhere else? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, the kid they'll boo you. Can you so can you do an accent? Good. Can you do an accent? That <laughs> nah, doesn't matter. Um, do. Do they have the foreign heels in like Japan or in England? Jake, they are the foreign heels. No, they're not because they're not foreign there. See, I, don't, I knew you wouldn't understand how this worked. What do you mean? Japan, Japan's not here, so that's foreign. Right. Oh, Mike Lucas, the dumb, the very dumb ref. Yes, the very dumb ref is a very good wrestling trope as well. We should just do a whole episode of best and worst wrestling tropes. Um, we are. Uh, I feel like. In every nation but America, the foreign heel is exclusively American. No, no, you don't think so? No, 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 no. It's it's at, they're the outsider, right? They are not one of yours. You are you. You just take it on a on a massive scale, right? It's sure. it's just like oh, worldwide competitors, but look, uh, they're from our country. Oh, all right, cool. Yeah. Hey, uh. They're from your state or province. Hey, uh, that's pretty cool. Hey, they're from your hometown. Fuck yeah, yeah. I'm rooting for this p- person. It's like the tribalism. And then anybody outside yeah. of that's like, well, no, fuck you. I want the person in my backyard to win. Um, Mike Lucas just says the white guy is the foreign heel in Japan. <laughs> doesn't matter yeah. what uh, brand of white you are. As long as you're white, you're a foreign heel in Japan. That's right. I respect that. Um. Yeah, it does play into just our like uh, the trope the, of you want your hometown, yeah, you want your local person to win the match because you came out from there. Uh, I've never really understood it. It's the same thing of like at a concert, the band goes, hey, this town, you're the best. And everybody goes, yeah, that's where we are. And people like that. Yeah. I've never been one to like that. Me neither. It never does anything for me. Hey, you happen to be born here by chance. Aren't you or you proud? moved here because of circumstances. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I do feel like it, 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 there's two things that occur. It's like, I think more so of a certain era, it was a little bit about like, yeah, xenophobia, especially if they're an anti American foreigner. It's a little bit about that, like, boo you because you're different. But also in sport, which is what this spectacle originated as, you know, pretending to be. It's a little bit of like the Olympicness of it, where it's like, oh no, yes, like this person is fighting on behalf of this nation and or as you said, sometimes state, city, you know. So there's a little bit of that, like, oh no, we're gonna root for the our guy, and it's not just because you know we're tying this into some sort of political, um war commentary which so many of the foreign wrestler bad guys fall into uh, like whatever's happening politically we just go like yeah we're gonna do that yeah um yeah mike lucas says the russians were the ultimate foreign heels in the 80s uh yeah i feel like every era kind of has their like hero whoever we're at war with right exactly whoever we're at war with whether because then yeah you get into uh, slaughter in the nineties and all the desert storm stuff. And I'm trying to remember what they called Sheik then. Like he changed to a different character name. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I just saw in the other guy, I just saw an a, action figure uh, of that character. And I, I feel like I even took a photo of it to play, place in discord and I never did. Um, and I'd rather not guess the names. I know it was a Colonel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm going to find Mustafa. It. Mustafa. Colonel Mustafa. Right. I was going to say, I knew I took a photo of this uh, 
because it was like right when he passed away, I saw this uh, this uh, action figure in a store, and it was in the clearance section. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's so sad. He died, and he put his toy on clearance. Uh, I thought I'd take a picture of it. Now I can't find it. Doesn't matter. Um, well, who are some of your fa- who are some of your favorites or least favorites? This isn't a best and worst because listen, we didn't do that much research, but. And you also said no. Yeah, it's just true. its own thing. Yeah, it's its own thing. Uh, well, I'll go with um, one that made a big impact on me as a kid. Uh, and this was right at the tail end of watching wrestling. Was Yokozuna right? I I certainly didn't look at him and go, "He's Samoan." <laughs> right. Sure. Of course. Don't fucking lie to me. I just, I was like, no, yeah, yeah I obviously he's Japanese. I 100% believed it. Because they said he's Japanese and he's not speaking. And when he does, he says bonsai. Plus only Japanese. That guy's Japanese. Yeah, only Japanese people do that with their hair and wear those things around their, around their bellies. I also grew up believing that Pat Morita was clearly <laughs> Japanese. Sure. Not knowing that he was Hawaiian. Yep. Because he played Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. And that guy's Japanese. Yeah. Speaks Japanese. He's, what are you talking about? You know. Ralph Macho is clearly <laughs> from New York somewhere. Yeah. And he was. I mean, don't get us started on Chief J, Chief J Strongbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to burst uh, Jake's uh, what do you mean? throughout this episode. So, yeah. So, so yeah. Yokozuna, I feel like that's he's definitely uh, like the first of like my era of like, oh, this is being billed as the f- the scary foreign heel. Um, especially because he was going up against, you know, all, all of our baby faces in a way that was also all that were left, all that were left. Also, you have like anytime you have a mouthpiece, which I think the mouthpiece is like a kind of a staple of the foreign heel because it makes the wrestler that much more scary if we don't hear them speak because maybe they don't they don't speak English. Yeah, he he was a layered foreign heel rather than just the he's not from here and i hate your country your country's the worst uh, boo. right he didn't do that no he was stoic he was proud he was a champion sumo wrestler yes he was a yokozuna a title that you had to earn he was a he was an accomplished guy from the get-go that they treated it like that so it wasn't just some guy working his way up right he had the presence of this guy's already a main event guy. This guy is a big deal. And uh, like you said, with the mouthpiece, with the, with the Mr. Fuji, yeah. later Jim Cornette, in addition, he, he didn't have to do all that much to get you to be mad at him. So if you're chanting to me, what this was, was if you chanted USA at him and you're being pro America at him, right. You're rooting for your home team. Yes. It wasn't about, Fuck you, Japan. It wasn't about trying to tear down where he was from or saying uh, anything negative in that respect to him. It's trying to, uh, to a point I, I made last week, it's trying to break the stoic guy's nature. Right. And get him to go, no, Japan's better and break focus and have him yell yeah. at you or anything. It's, it's, we're trying to shake you. Shit, we can't shake you. Yeah, especially when he's in there against Bret Hart. And we're like, USA! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, Yokozuna is great. I, I, or Undertaker. I mean, Death Valley. Do we even recognize that as part of the continental United States? Listen, he had the old American flag in his robe that one time. Uh, that one time. He's like, this isn't my jacket. No, who, who put this in my jacket? That's where all my stolen pocket watches are supposed to be. Guys, if we're going to joke, you shit in clothing. You don't add flags to it. Come on. Um, Mr. Fuji, who else did Mr. Mr. Fuji manage? Well, a lot. And before that, I mean, he's also on this list of right. he was a wrestler. Because I was going to say, he's kind of. With a tag team partner of Professor Tanaka, who uh, we've omitted uh, mistakenly from the best wrestlers in movies. Oh, from what? I don't remember. He's an odd job. Oh shit! Right. Oh yeah. What and, was uh, the, he's in the Running Man? What was the name of their tag team? I think they were just Mr. Fuji and uh, Professor Tanaka. Okay. Um, I don't think it was like. I like that. There's like, 
that it's it's a generational bad guy foreign wrestler <laughs> that it was passed down throughout the generations well that he was able to continue on and have such a lengthy career of he's a wrestler mr fuji is such an unusual speaker right and most of the time it makes sense but he still had a presence enough of like i am evil and i am saying something and then incoherent thought and uh, in the ring like uh, okay yeah he he definitely felt like what americans thought japanese television was do you know like like when you see like a uh like a, 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 a whether it's like a samurai movie or like a japanese show on american television where mm-hmm. it's it's what some american wrote as like oh yeah this is what all of their art is like that's how mr fuji spoke yeah and then he goes oh my buddy just got this really cool movie where he plays this guy odd job i'm gonna dress like him in that movie now well and then does so up until yokozuna he's like that tuxedo is too hot i'm just gonna wear a bathrobe i'm going back to my, or kimono or back, whatever yeah. it specifically was well you know it was part of the package it was part of the yokozuna package he was uh do what do they have um what are they called in like japanese dojos are they called like young boys Young boys. It's, was he technically wash the balls? Was he Yokozuna's young boy? I don't that his old boy. Mister Fuji was never a young no, boy. He was born forty eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was his geisha girl. Oh, wow! All right. Yeah, Memoirs of a Geisha is all about Mister Fuji's life. Is it really? I never read it or saw it. It's a well, it's a book. And now you movie, got a little treat for yourself. Add it to the watch alongs. Yeah, uh, so Yokozuna was unique. Yokozuna yeah. was definitely different, and he wasn't based about it. And he never had to cater to it. He never, from what I remember ever seeing, like he never had to really go down that rabbit hole of like, ah, America's stupid. Right. Uh, and it's I, I think it's interesting, too, because I think that there's a different brand of heel f- depending on the foreign nation or, or, or area or like American generalized version of what, you know, these group of countries might be ethnically whereas yeah are we are we at war with you then we hate you fuck you we'll tear you down right do we have we had beef with you in the past like eh, you're weird you're different or culturally like everything's weird or just that's mysterious right don't know anything about it right so we can be kind of ambiguous and just refer to it and no one really knows and we can say whatever narrative we want sure or is it just like a like England's easy? We right. left you. We fought you. But so what I was gonna say though is I do feel like there's a specific brand to all of the different foreign heels, and I think that Japan has kind of the best of them because I feel like there aren't a ton. Now that not to say that there were never any American hating Japanese characters, but it in Japan it's usually billed as like like you said it's kind of as Yokozuna in a sense where it's like. This person is just a, a monster. This person is just the best at what they do. They're a talent. And it's 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 almost more of like a holier than now without saying it. Whereas like the British characters, it's always that like, ugh, gross, America, Britain's better. And you know, you've got like your your regals and stuff there. Yeah, we can acknowledge um who are good fighters. What kind of fighting right. do they do? Yeah. What kind of active sport do they have? Or is there a martial artist or something right. that we can play into? Because then you wouldn't question the legitimacy. Yeah. And if you're introducing a French, just flat out, like not French Canadian. No. French. Just a French wrestler, and they are a skilled what? Because they're French. Come on, buddy. They make cheese really you're, good. You're a bunch of chickens and cowards. And <laughs> right. So that's a different Yeah, they're all they, I mean, there's a reason Glass Joe is the first guy you fight in Mike Tyson's punch out, and he's from France. Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, because he's got a glass jaw. Um, I do. It is funny though. It is, especially back in the day, like eighties wrestling where everything is a cartoon. It is all like the, like the Simpsons stereotype of whatever the foreign person is as the heel Mm -hmm. in a way that I think is so uniquely American wrestling, which is why I, I asked if 
But so many of these acts were done previously to WWF. So oh, while yeah, yeah, WWF yeah. like featured the cartoon, oh no, many of these were made in the Indies, uh, in the territories, were made in the territories, but not necessarily cartoony. Right. Sure. They might have been turned up a little bit once they got to the accent had to, you know, Vince in the machine. Well, like for an example, uh, Kamala, right? The Ugandan giant came out of Memphis, right? The, the uh, I I forget uh, the uh, uh, Harris. It's uh, Husky. I can't remember. It's uh, no, it's it's Kamala Harris, and then his name's like mirrors our vice president currently, um, Kamala. But Kamala wrestler, and then it was Lawler and company going like i need a new monster bad guy right. and they took we know it was kamala right. and went like hey i got this idea right and i forget what inspired it uh but it was no one knows anything about uganda right. they did the scene or whatever about uganda and they took and they knew this dude is huge he's a large man yeah and then came up with this character and jerry did the art and the guy had some ideas and they all ran with it. And they made these vignette packages of this Ugandan giant. Yep. That is going, Chris Harris. Yeah. Thank you, Mike Thanks, Lucas yeah. for looking that one up. And so it was a scary foreign guy. Yeah. Kamala that is from Uganda. No one knows anything about. I think and I- he's coming to the, to Memphis and is going to eventually fight Lawler. Right. So it's, it's this total unknown. But then this guy created this w- weird character around it. And we know the cartoonish version of it much later. Right, where he was a cannibal. But, yeah. And pinning guys upside down because he right. didn't understand the rules. Right, yeah. He just knew enough to fight, but he was so uniquely weird and had the crazy eyes look and the disconnected look to him where people don't know. It's like, who right. is this fucking guy? Right. So it was believable. Right, yeah. Yeah. So he was something where pre-cartoon in a world without internet, with a world without anything else, you just see this stranger showing up and he's massive and he's not speaking English and he's a bit of a wild man and everything around it. Everyone reacted to it as though it's real. It's going to seem real and it's going to seem scary. Yeah, I'm try- I'm trying to think because I feel like that is the sort of thing where... uh it was definitely inspired by something pop culture that feels very much like someone saw a TV show or someone saw something and and maybe a a documentary. It was, yeah, usually wrestling does revolve around, Hey, that thing's popular. Let's rip it off. Exactly. But I don't know what that one is. Cause it's not a clear late seventies, early eighties. Oh, this one movie came out. So they stole that. Like, you know, the fucking brood came from all things vampires at the time. So they went, we gotta be that too. Right. Look, we're so original. Uh, yeah, I was trying to uh to to find any sort of inspiration, but uh, when I when I search for anything, it's mostly articles about like oh, overcoming stereotypes and pro wrestling. <laughs> Fucking clickbait do gooders. Um, but that guy, it's it's amazing what Kamala's story is with that, where right. he's able to. It's that crazy time where he's got to keep up kayfabe, right? He's got to, he has a painted face, but if he's in Memphis, he's still got to be aware. Like I'm a, uh, oh, Kamala was James Harris. Chris. Oh yeah. Wildcat Chris Harris from TNA. Kamala was James Harris. Thank you for the correction, Mike Lucas. Um, James Harris has to be aware. I'm a large black man in Memphis. I'm, I'm bald. And. I still have to be aware that no one can ever figure out that I'm Kamala. So right. to what extent he goes to, I don't know how much he hides that stuff or hides himself. If he doesn't have much of a personal life, but he's got to be this character and in the locker room and leaving the building and however much extent he has to do it, but he's able to make a career. He's able to make money. He's able to take that around from territory to territory. And then big boom, WWF calls him, he gets to work with Undertaker, gets right. to do a lot of stuff, have enough of a run where he's made a career off of a totally insane bullshit character. Right. That was one of my youngest uh like favorite memories was Taker painting the logos on the coffin 
the Kamala like chest mm-hmm. logos. I remember thinking that the was moon so fucking the, cool. In the in the stars. Yeah. So apparently, there's an artist named uh, Frank Fazella uh, who does like these sort of like fantasy things. Is that your cousin? <laughs> um, don't think so. But uh, and apparently, like that's what Kamala was inspired by, like a painting of his. Okay. Where he does these sort of like fantastical warrior kind of things. At least that's what it says on this website. Obviously, you know, grain of salt for any truth behind this, but uh yeah. Um but yeah, I mean uh definitely uh, uh uh on the short list of greatest like scary foreigner heels of all time. Because also he was it, he like you said he was a huge terrifying man. Which yeah, adds to that, it. You, we talk about moments in time that we'd like to go back in wrestling and see. I would love to have been around Memphis, either like the debut of when he first was there, because I, I can't imagine all this stuff wasn't on TV right. or the first time they introduced him in front of crowds. Like to be in that atmosphere, to be in the like, <gasps> who is this? Right. And it's something so different, so scary, because hey, it's a bunch of <laughs> white guys with de- de- dyed blonde hair. They're right, all fighting right. each other. And then this dude shows up and is scary to our There's, kids freaking out or old ladies yelling at him or old ladies going like, I, I'll just sit down. I'm not going <laughs> to yell at that guy. There's some, definitely some similarities too, I think between him and Yokozuna as far as like sp- yeah. the spectacle. Cause there's a lot of guys where it's like, Oh, bad guy wrestler. And it's like, okay, they just look like they look, look like an athlete from a different country. Whereas like, there's mm-hmm. a spectacle to the it's Andre the Giant. If you think about it, Andre the Giant is there's your French, you know, there's your like the you know the good the best example of that. We um, gl- duct taped eight <laughs> French people together and now we got a mega bad French guy. Yeah, shit. I mean, Andre's I don't consider him a bad guy foreign wrestler though. He uh, it's but kind it's, of is. It's a short stint of right. when he was a bad guy. Right. But it was in a in the biggest spotlight. Right. Imagine possible. But it's also credit to the performers. Like, it's always how they talk about Undertaker, where it's like, oh, it's the best gimmick that's ever been. Right. But it, if it was on anybody else, it wouldn't have worked. Yep. Right? Like, it's credit to Kamala. It's credit to Fuji. Like, they were so good. Credit to Yokozuna. Anybody else, it could have just fallen flat within five weeks, and right. then they scrap it, and they move on. Um. Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, they say that a lot about Taker a lot, too, where they're like, oh, yeah, Taker. Nobody else would have made that shit work. Yeah, yeah. that's what I preface that with. Um, drunk. drunk. Very drunk. Uh, yeah. So drunk. let's talk. Let's talk on wine Britain. with Andre the Giant. Let's talk Britain. Because I think that Regal is on, also on the short list. Very, very top of best bad guy foreigner wrestlers, because I don't. I don't have a specific memory of him being like proactively anti-America as much as he was just the perfect. He is, he was what they wanted Hunter Hearst Helmsley to be as his original Hunter Hearst Helmsley, whatever that character was when he was in the blue the blood. Blue blood. Yeah. Um, well, cause Regal, this is what Regal's is. So you say like, I can't come up with a specific thing. I can. It's him coming out in every Southern state that wcw was in every southern city that he's in the second he walks out he's smelling shit yes a hundred percent yeah he's he's smelling shit and just looking and he's not saying you all stink you pinching his nose because he's more refined he's more refined than that he wouldn't say that because he is a british gentleman (laughs) He's still a bad poker yes, player, yes. but that's what's so fun. Yeah, a hundred percent. He's just going like, oh God. Um, you all smell like burnt rubble and nacho cheese. But also, while it may be not a spectacle to the sense of a Kamala or Yokozuna, he still is an incredible wrestler and he's tough as nails. Like he's one of those people who you see him and he's he might be dressed in the fancy gold trim in the robe and he might be presenting himself in a way that like you said the southern territory wrestlers are, are like oh it is british nancy whereas you wouldn't want to meet him in an alley he looks like a fighter like a legit fighter 
Yes, he was able to have the combo of the two because, yeah, you dress him up, like you said, like looking like a Nancy and somebody can make fun of his robes and everything. But he was a brawler. He, he was unique at the time because he's bringing over the different British style. Right. That there was previously to what like Diana, my kid and the bulldog had done that he's bringing in this unusual technical right. style the grapple and then would fucking forearm you in the face real hard. Right. And slug you and then twist you up. So credibility behind, hey, you look like a bitch. Oh, all right. Well, that's, <laughs> that's pretty hard. Right. This music okay. sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're 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 backing off a little bit and then you're saying something. And if he looks at you, you go, mm, all right. All right. Also, okay. also, listen, on, on the flip side, uh, you know, the whatever whatever might have been unfortunate amalgamation of like you know, Afrocentric stereotypes that would create the Kamala character. You have William Regal who changed his actual accent to sound more like where he was billed from, even though Americans have no fucking idea. We, we have no idea right. what somebody from Blackpool versus somebody from Newcastle versus somebody from London. We don't know what the differences of those accents, but he did. And he, it just like there was a level of authenticity that he presented that was yeah. like, I truly believed that as a young kid in this, you know, third row, that if I would have said something that I might have gotten smacked, you know, like there was a, a, a believability there. Right. We talk about him a lot when we bring up like just the greatest heels where it's like, oh, yeah, no, he's going out there and he is. There is a he's he's begging you to oh, evoke a reaction. 100%. Unlike Yoko and Kamala, right? They want you to sooner question everything or recoil and being scared. Regal's begging for you to yell at him, right? Because that's you know the term "work" gets thrown around a lot. I think incorrectly, like that's working, right? It's working the crowd, right? Yes. The second that he comes out of the curtain, well, hold on, I got an easy four minutes right here. Right. Come out, sniff, look to the side, have all those people say, yell, gesticulate, all the things they're going to do, and then look in disgust and look away. Boom. That was 45 seconds. Right. That was easy work. And those people are fucking riled up over there. Oh, I got them. They can't wait to watch you get beat if that is indeed what you're planning to do. You know, what's on the card that night? Any of that. They're, they're ready to yell right. more. And like that's, he's so good at that. And, 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 and can wrangle those people into doing what he wants. There's also something, I think uh, the British and like, you know, United Kingdom foreigners uh, touch an American nerve as well because of our unique, you know, uh, history where the aristocratic nature. You're not my dad. <laughs> exactly. The aristocratic nature that we paint all UK people, even if they're just, you know, you know, uh, British hillbillies. We I mean, still... the original Star Wars trilogy solidified that where it's just all the bad guys. Oh, they're British. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I feel like it it's there's it. I don't know. It's like something ingrained in us as American fans when like someone with a, a British accent is, you know, uh, beating up one of our guys and snarling. We just go like, boo to you yeah. in the river. <laughs> We got a president, yeah. not a yes. queen. Um, have, did you even see Hamilton? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Probably I think didn't. I think that uh, Regal is the best British foreigner bad guy. Can you think of anybody better? Ooh, anybody better? Um, yeah, really. Iron cheek. Oh, I said British, British foreign. I meant specifically. Isn't Iron in British? I'm not. No, uh, you're right. I'm not familiar. Uh, Dave Taylor was enjoyable. Um, Dave Taylor. Uh, he was that? his tag team partner a lot. Oh, like that right, was yes, kind of the mentor to right. to Regal. D not he didn't get showcased that much. No. He was kind of the I'm trying to think of something equivalent. Like more people know Fit Finley now. Yes, but there was certainly a time where people weren't that aware of him, but the, the kind of lesser known right. British uh, bad guy, but British bad guy who really hung their hat on being British. Yeah. Uh, nothing comes to mind. Cause I think of a lot of people, but I don't right. equate the, 
they are right. bad because, because they're yes. British yeah. to start. I think that's why I feel like he, but it's also an era thing where he got in there at the right time to solidify that. And now it feels like things that come afterwards are copycats. Lord Littlebrook. Uh, bless you. I don't know who that is. You should. I probably should. Um, all right. Well, uh, there you go. That solidifies my answer that he is the best. Let's talk chic. Cause you brought him up. Sure. Chic. I mean, top of the list for the greatest bad, greatest anti-American <laughs> character of all time. Ramblings, uh, the eighties yelling. Yeah. But unique to him. Um, fucking Jack to the gills. The mustache, the boots, the, the boots were just forever to me. Like, Oh, that's what Iranians wear. Right. <laughs> Oh yeah, of course. That's it's. They wear a, a curved up boot. Yeah, that you will bleed if you get kicked in the head with it. Um, he was the earliest of anything like any toys we had. We had the thumb wrestlers. Yes, we put the thumbs in their yeah, butts, yeah. and we had the Hogan. Is it in their butts cheek. or is it in their torsos? Do you just cut their legs off? Were they really? Did they have they little it, feet that stuck out the front? Yeah, it was a it was a whole. Oh, you're right. It was a guy, like arms up. Legs out You're and down, right. and you put the thumb in their butt. <laughs> I don't remember that on WWE Untold with Randy Orton. Well, he should remember. Uh, it's those the the fucking clubs. Oh yeah. Well, not understanding certainly the weight of what those are and the difficulty, but seeing years later, any like a, there was a while, I think Al Snow was attempting Trying to do it on TikTok, it, right? Where he's showing his progress and Al Snow is now jacked to the gills right. and he's going like, eh, Nope, yeah, <laughs> not getting it. Cause it involves uh, this articulation of your muscles yeah. that have to keep the momentum balance, going. Yeah. As well as the strength. It's insane. I think Backland was the only other person who, ever did it like okay. on tv if i'm not mistaken i think they talked about that when they uh um for most wwe's most wanted treasures or some shit like that the clubs were one of the items uh, okay and of course i think it's backland who has them if i'm not mistaken but he wouldn't give them up but he gave like a different pair to the fake museum that they were making for the for the television show <laughs> okay. he was like he's like no you can't have these fuck you these are mine these are his and here's a different pair that or some shit like that. I could be butchering all of that. It was like two years ago when we watched that. But Sheik, Sheik is the scariest. Yeah, I think to me, Sheik was um, while I had uh, as a child, like no awareness of Iran, Iraq, knowing differences, knowing just knowing like somewhat of a Middle East. And he was a a a giant scary guy in the intensity in his eyes and we'd yell and scream that, that voice just a fucking scary dude yeah that voice um there was a you know he's the he's the OG Brock Lesnar he felt unpredictable like yeah. he, there's a level of unpredictability when you watch his old matches where you go like he knows this is just all a dance right <laughs> or the interactions of the crowd and the uh, Iran number 1 America uh, in the spitting right that um, there were times when it felt like as you look back at wrestling and you go, all right, they're playing a character or they signed up for this. It seems like wrestling pulled him from real life. Right. Cause it's like, he should be in wrestling because otherwise he's going to end up in jail. Right. Cause he's trying to fight everyone in the streets and saying that he's the best. And like, let's get the only place where this man can, can make a living and not be arrested is in pro wrestling. Like, Oh, okay. Right. That's where he should be. Right. Yeah. There, he definitely is uh one of those people where he didn't need to try very hard to create whatever that character b would become. It was mm -hmm. just kind of there. Yeah. It's I, you got to turn yourself up to 11. Hey, this guy's already in 11. What do we do? Uh, by the way, Alice Rayer says Samoa Joe, uh, did that workout? I'm guessing he, he, she means the Persian clubs on the Celtic Warrior workout, which is like Seamus's little show. Celtic, Celtic. Uh, I, that would have been. I want to see. I want to see Samoa Joe try the Persian clubs. I got to look that up. Alice Raider, if you have that link, please post it on our Discord yeah, yeah. so everybody can. Yeah, please do check that out. 
that'd be wild. Um, but yeah, I definitely think like stirring up all of the xenophobia pro American, especially when you've got a guy like Hogan or, you know, on the other side of you and then you're teaming him with one of the other all time, great wrestling foreigner, bad guys. I forget the name of the show. Uh, Nikolai Volkov, where you have like here, we've got this alliance of two uh, American enemy nations. And the coming out and doing the 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 the, the national anthem, the Russian national yeah. anthem, which Sheik is all for. Yeah, he as long as it's, you respect him. Yeah, he has a huge amount of respect for Russia. There, uh, Russia, Iran, great friendship. And uh, Sheik would convey. Sheik made me understand as a kid. Well, again, like you always think your team's the best. Right. You know, let's say, hey, where I'm from, what I got, everything, like we're the best. She could make me wonder, well, he really thinks that Ryan is number one. Is he wrong? Right. Wait, if he thinks we're not good, to the, maybe it ran's pretty fucking to awesome. The point where he, where he, sp- he loves to it. To the point where he's spitting at us. Yeah. And, and I fucking loved Nikolai Volkov singing the Russian national anthem. Yeah. Especially because it was like, awful. It was good. It was awful sounding in the best way possible. It was all like guttural. It was like singing, singing from his throat. Um, but I never heard it otherwise. So I just thought like, oh, that's the guy who sings it. He sings it the best. <laughs> that's he's the he's the official recording artist for the Russian national anthem. But he's Polish, I believe. Maybe. He's again Volkov, a guy where it's like you want to be Russian, right? Okay, there's money in it. Okay, be Russian. Uh, you got it. And then forever, Croatia. his whole life, everyone's like, "Hey, Croatian." You're he was Croatian, Croatian, Croatian American. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from he was from Yugoslavia, playing a Russian heel, but it made a whole career out of it, right? Absolutely. Like being this, being this guy to. To be known for that, to be hated, to be hated, have death threats, fucking people want to stab you as you go to work, and then you're loved, and then people look back and go, ah, wrestling, I get it, whatever. Oh, he's beloved then. People just fucking love it, but they still don't go, I get it, your name's uh, Gerard, and you're Croatian. Like, right. it's all we know. It's uh, it's Nikolai Volkov, everybody's like, yeah, sure. He lives a double life. Right. Yeah. And one half of what those a, lives for that period of time was very dangerous too. Yeah, what a f- what a fucking weird life to. Uh, oh, what do you do for a living? I pretend I'm Russian to have people get so hey, mad they me. buy a ticket and want to fight me and throw. Th- oh, but then what? Then I get in a ring and fake fight a guy and then leave a guy probably not born in America that they're all chanting USA for. Yeah, that guy's Croatian, <laughs> but he's got a cleft in his in his chin. So they think he's American. Um, yeah, I was trying to look up to see, uh, like, where the where the where the beginning of the Russian character was, and it seems like it was WWWF in the seventies. Okay. Um, because before then, Volkov was in a tag team called the Mongols. Uh, with uh, another person who I'm trying to, uh, with Newton Tatry. I don't know who that is. Oh. Newton Tatry was his tag team partner as Gito to me. Gito Mongol and <laughs> Beppo Gong Mongol. With, oh my god, names. those names are great. Yeah. Um, we got to find some of those matches for a watch along. They look they look ridiculous. They look like they have horns. As I know I'm just really? gonna show my phone instead of pulling it up, but those are the Mongols. Cool. They look like yeah, that's Nikolai on the left. Yeah, they look like they have little, like they look like they have fur, furry boa, like Ric Flair style robes, and then little unicorn horns. Maybe they look they're the like original they're out of the movie Time Bandits. The original New Day. <laughs> like that Time Bandits. Mom, Dad, it's a piece of evil. Don't touch it. It's gloomy and blumpy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, those two, though, Volkov and Sheik, it doesn't get any more boo to you America rules than that. It's at the time of peak American exceptionalism, the 80s, where, I mean, America was... And huge body guys. And oh, Nikolai's yeah. a, 
a big guy, but he's not a bodybuilder. No, no. He's just he's he kind of has what Regal has. He's like scary looking fighter. He's just a guy. He's big grandpa strong. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, he does. He's got grandpa strength or he's got like he's got bar strength. Yeah, Yeah, it's you don't really know. And that's the time of Arnold and definition of like huge bodybuilders equal big bucks and they're larger in life. But Nikolai was an enigma in that way because I couldn't tell you to this day, like he could just be of average strength. He could right. be of average agility. Like he could just be average across the board and he's never really shown or yeah, that's- in a good or bad way of him being good or have weaknesses in something. Yeah, that's right? that's a good like, point. Like he does. So he was able to mask everything. I think it's, I think it just lends to that sort of old heel brawler wrestling style too, where he didn't have to Mm -hmm. do much. The character did all the work. All he had to do was just, you know, do a a decent enough job of beating up the baby face to the point where everybody hated you. And then you were going home happy, going home paid. I'm trying to think. You're not going home also. You're staying on the road. Um, that's what that's the home is the home was whatever the next hotel was uh hotel they didn't, they didn't pay for the hotels uh has there has volk has nikolai volkov been in a video game i'm trying to think of yeah has he yeah i don't know about any of the modern ones but because i feel oh i know i meant yeah i meant like recently because i feel like i've i've seen like chic in a download pack or like a dlc for something but I feel like Volkov is one of those characters. And there was something about you talking about his wrestling style and whether he was strong or fast. It made me think about him in a way that I went like, shit, has he been like in a video game? Oh, he's in WWE champions, the mobile game. Right. The one I sure. Play. So he's pretty sweet in there. Um, let's see here. Uh, wow. That's cool. It's, it's on Wikipedia. There's a section of it. Oh, really? Like, uh, yeah. like in other media? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So the last this was updated. So here's what we got. Legends of Wrestling, Legends of Wrestling 2, WWE SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain, Showdown's Legends of Wrestling, which I believe was the third and final game, right. and then WWE Legends of WrestleMania, which is a real that, shit yeah, show that, of a game. That's that like um, kind of cartoony one that came out with like Andre and Hogan and Rock on the cover. And they tried to change up the, the gameplay to make it accessible for everybody. Right. But it's so bad, and dull, clunky. Um, I think the probably the best one you're gonna get is SmackDown. Here comes the pain out of the whole bunch. Unless you want to play WWE Champions, the bubble game. Please sponsor us. I play that game a lot. Uh, like too much. Well, what about some more? I mean, I feel like we're really uh, harping on the the golden era of foreign heels. Well, there's something in the chat that I think is kind of deserving to to bring up when it comes to the times have changed. Right. Is this still relevant? Is this still something that needs to happen? Or I think I'm more than this. I don't want that. Uh, it was brought up in the chat here. Alice Raider saying, what about Mustafa Ali not being f- the foreign bad guy, but Vince wanting to, to play the foreign bad guy? Right. It never came to fruition, and- though, right? Yeah, and uh, then the story came around, and Mike Lucas brought this up. Wasn't Ali supposed to be a 9-11 sympathizer? Oh, jeez. I think this was in the time, too, with, um, I forget their previous name, but FTR having the different outfits. The revival. And it's like, the bad Vince ideas were on a roll. Right, right. Um, and, yeah, trying to shake up Mustafa Ali and give him something. That's and tough. it's like, yeah. But- that's not it. Wasn't there a, wasn't there a character from that I wasn't watching at that time, but wasn't there a character who came out right after 9/11 and all of the Islamophobia that they were just like, yeah, put all your hatred on this character who's Islamic. Muhammad Hassan. Yes, that's who it was, right. So Muhammad Hassan was a brilliant character performed by a really really talented guy. And all things went tits up and the guy doesn't, I think he's only started to finally do like conventions and stuff now, Okay, but like wrote everything off. And I think is also trying to be an actor, but, um, Muhammad Hassan was a guy, a very confident, a very, uh, cool guy. And he had, um, oh, forgive me. I'm, I'm forgetting his name at the moment. Um, Davari, uh, Sean Davari okay. was his manager. 
because uh, Davari could speak Farsi. Oh, okay. So I apologize. My familiarity sure. with the culture and the languages and stuff aren't great. So I'm more than positive it's Farsi, but beyond that, I'm not entirely sure where he had said he was from. And, uh, but the character would be, I'm Muhammad Hassan. I am from where he was from. Right. And Saudi Arabia, Americans look down on me and they look at me as though I'm a, I'm a threat and I'm an evil person and I'm bad, but I'm American. Oh, that was like my family. My heritage is this interesting, but I'm American and you judge me. I can speak it in the language and then like, uh, uh, fucking Davari would then speak in another language and saying the same thing. Like, how dare you judge us? We live here. We, we love, we love America just as much as you, but it would play on the xenophobia of America, the fear of everything nine 11, but he wasn't going into that. It was, don't you judge me. Interesting. Don't, don't do that. And that's what was so unique and cool about it. And, and then he was on the, on the trajectory of the time of like, He'd fight a legend. He'd fight, like Lawler was the gatekeeper. And then it'd be like, he'd fight Hurricane and each thing would build up to a pay per view match. And this all built up to, it wasn't a very long run. Maybe he had a year ish or so. Like it, they did a thing with Hogan at Mania. Right. And that was a big deal. And that's when it started to get a little murky because then when Hogan was involved, it was like, I beat up a foreign right. guy. It's like, not really. Right. That's um, yeah, that's interesting. I don't I I don't think I recall that that was sort of the angle, and it's weird that they were clearly booking him as a heel against baby yeah. faces, so they knew he was going to get booed, even though he was just going out there saying like I don't like the way that Islamophobia is running rampant and the way that the media is representing my people. But he still it was still presented as like yeah, but I don't like you. I don't trust you. You could still be a bad right, guy. Right. Sure. Yeah. Like you could still well, potentially cheat and, and do shit in matches where I'm like, I don't like you. Right. Um, because he was at the end of the day where he's not arrogant. He's still like, I'm better. I can be better than everyone you like. I'm better than everybody. I'm going to be WWE champion someday. Interesting. Um, this all ended with the bombings on a, a subway or a train in England, in London, I think. Oh, shit. So. They had done, this was when SmackDown was taped, and uh, there was, I think, an assault on The Undertaker for the SmackDown. Okay. Where it was a bunch of hooded guys, uh, like, you know, ski masks and probably, like, Kevlar military-looking outfits. Okay. And they all attacked The Undertaker, and it was a setup by Muhammad Hassan. I think to be revealed later, but it was pretty obvious. It's right. like leading to it. It's like, that's who did right, this. Yeah. From what I recall, again, this may all be incorrect, but the attackers were described to be looking like what the guys would be on SmackDown. Right. So the bombers, right. The bombers look like yes. what those were. And this was all too close. This is all, it felt bad. And then they still aired it. Oh shit. So WWE took a bunch of shit for it. And it was like, this is in poor taste. This is bad. And then what happens? They fire Muhammad Hassan. They fire the performer Performer, that didn't write it, didn't construct it, didn't perform it, didn't do it. They fired him to take the heat off of them and go like, we don't worry. We fixed it. Everybody. We fired the, the bad guy. And then Muhammad Hassan was just forever. Like, what the fuck? I I did everything you wanted. I got shit. For the whole year, like basically, be, I'm being the old school bad guy wrestler. Right. Like, yeah, people hate I'd me. love to. F- I really want to watch some of those promos, especially of that era where he's talking about, like, w- the way that you guys are reporting what I'm doing right now is not right. Like, I'm curious about yeah, the, that. Yeah, like yeah. there, my people who work in you know uh, convenience stores, and you look at them, they wear the typical headdresses on their head, and you judge them and you hate them and. It's calling shit out. It was really unique. It was really cool for the time. And there was a lot of big hopes for the guy because he felt really different. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that, but, that definitely feels more unique um, than maybe what Vince was pushing for Mustafa Ali, uh, yeah. which just seems to be like, oh, go, go home, old man. Please stop. 
And who knows how many of those, if there's like, there is 20 ideas and that's the one that get out, gets out right. or, or if that's a Pritchard idea, I don't know anymore with all that stuff. And right. That's, that's bad. It's that's, all, that's not going to help that's anybody. That's not going to help sell tickets. That's going to make everyone feel bad. And I also think it's a little weird because, well, Vince is in bad taste a lot of the time. That one's hard for me to believe when the post 9-11 show they did on SmackDown was so unique right. and Vince is clearly so pro-America right. and was about bringing everybody back together that all these years later, he's like, yeah, but you liked it, right? And we're going to do that. Right. And like, and, really? and, the, and those instances, it's like, yeah, this dude is just such a carny at heart. At the end of the day, he just wants to get people in the tent. Yeah. I don't know. And he's wrong about what will do it. That's what the point I'm attempting to make. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do feel like, though, the the evolution of the heel wrestler has changed quite a bit. Um, uh, we don't have a ton more time here, but uh, I think that we went from the, like, oh, this is rooted in a war or the political climate or some new brand of xenophobia that's hot in America right now to just being, Oh, we just need somebody with an accent to bad mouth America. That's all we need. It doesn't need to be from a specific place that we don't like. Um, and I do feel like maybe, maybe that character was sort of like the end of the generic uh, you know, or not the generic, the, the politically based characters. And it ended up becoming a little bit more generic from there uh, with, you know, pretty much people from Canada just being like, oh, we don't like America or characters like Kozlov where they weren't specifically un-American. They were just a foreign fighter who was coming to take on one of our American heroes like a John Cena. And therefore they were, they fall into this generic foreign heel thing where they don't have a gimmick other than the fact that they're from that nation. He knows Sambo. Right. Oh, yeah. They talked so much about Sambo. I forgot about that. And he wore his little gi to the ring. Yeah, because that's the the fighting right. vignettes that they would show. Right, yeah. And uh, that was about it. It's like, he's Sambo and he's not from here. So yeah, it did. we'll let you know if we come up with more. Hey, he says double double E. <laughs> that's something. Did, how, has, have any of those characters survived? Like, who do you think has been the most successful of those, of that brand of just like, here's your sort of, you know, post attitude era generic. Cause I feel like the problem is they don't survive. They're either introduced. I think maybe shame that the character maintains yeah, or the wrestler, the wrestler really. I think Seamus maybe. Cause I feel like he was originally brought on as just like, bad guy generic bad guy but i think people liked him because he was weird looking he had a mohawk and he was pale white he's also fucking gigantic. yeah he's a spectacle um and it wasn't so much he's irish they didn't play into him being irish it's you get it <laughs> right. that's as irish as a fucking guy could look <laughs> yeah sure um i mean they so they named him shame we're good on that yeah so he actually got to escape it right. because of just how unabashedly fucking pale and redheaded he, right, he is. Right. Um, Del Rio, I guess, kind of. Yeah, a little bit. Because he was, uh, like, he's a mixed bag, right. right? He's a bit of a million dollar man. Yep, he was like the Mexican million dollar man. Um, but then they, they turned the baby face and they gave him happy music. <laughs> Yeah, and so he endured for way too long, in my opinion. Sure. But he he definitely did endure for a long time. I, I um, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say Rusev. Yeah, because he's still Rusev, going. Rusev, and like that was the best version of that character we had seen. And again, you have all the staples. You have the guy who barely speaks English on TV, the mouthpiece who, in this case, is what do they call her? The Russian bombshell. What was her? What was Lana's name? Ravishing Russian, which is a great, that's a great wrestling alliteration. Yeah. The Ravishing Russian Lana, who is his mouthpiece. You've got the dropping the giant flags. I mean, and all, if I'm not mistaken. A unique place. He was Bulgarian, which yep. hadn't been uh, harnessed in wrestling. Right. Yep. Because uh, it was easy to go like, oh, he's Russian. He's like, no, no, no. He's from Bulgaria. Bulgaria. His mouthpiece is Russian. So he's the Bulgarian brute. So we got a nickname for yep. him. So you can now 
learn. You won't know where it is on the map, but you go Bulgarian. You can't point to it, but you can. But you'll you if you hear it in a conversation, you're like, oh, you mean Rusev? Yeah, Bulgaria. He represents all people of Bulgaria now. I think he was the last like really good foreign heel whose whole character was that was Rusev Crush. His whole character was scary foreign guy. Yeah. There wasn't much to the character beyond like big, menacing, scary, not from America. Yeah. All right. We're going to get him to Cena. Right. And super pro America versus Bulgaria. All things America. U.S. title. Yep. We'll milk this for everything that it's worth. And he was able to survive beyond that and still have an ongoing career. Um, right. That wasn't just that and got to adapt and have a uh, what's his nuts singing right, for sure, him. The Rusev Day era. Yeah. Um, and then now being able to run himself a couple of times I, in AEW, but still for yeah. the better currently. I, I do think, though, that like that to me was the most successful modern version of that character because it also did actually elicit reactions where I feel like, I feel like the USA chants are sort of half ass at this point, you know, they're sort of like, all right, yeah, we, we like this guy, but he's not from America. And, we, and the other guy's being booked as like, I think because kayfabe, I mean, I do it when I go to NXT UK <laughs> and they're like, but that's yeah. nobody. I'm like, yeah, bring some in USA, USA. Uh, yeah, but I feel like nowadays because kayfabe is broken and we just like all the wrestlers, you know, like there's not as much of that. And we can go, hold on. Let me check real quick on Wikipedia. Yeah, right. you're not from, He's there, from Michigan. You fucking liar. He was born in Michigan. Yeah. But I think that like I, I remember when Rusev was doing the flags dropping, right? The big giant flag that would drop. And then like yeah. Cena got in there one day and, and, and he dropped it and it was an American flag and he was all upset. I remember that moment eliciting a huge reaction because of the surprise of it. Like, so I think Rusev is the last one to work and who was able to have like a lasting career who didn't just get pigeonholed because they didn't have a character beyond that or a personality. Yeah. Uh, Mike Lucas says uh, Rusev was originally billed from Russia. Was that I, NXT days? Do you I, well, that? I think he was billed from Russia, but he was like, it was one of those things where he was a, uh, uh, Bulgarian from Russia. Like he was a Russian born Bulgarian is I think is what they, cause he was, they always called him the Bulgarian brute, even in XT. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think he's probably the last, he's the last to survive that. You want to know what I think kind of killed the Russian, the, the foreign, uh, the foreign heel. And I say this killed not wrestling. They just do whatever they want always. And we'll all just accept it for what it is. Having uh fucking, uh, what were their names? Swagger and Cesaro with uh, Zeb. The real Americans. Having, yeah, the real Americans and Zeb Coulter taking what would become like the Tea Party leftists of the United States culture, American culture, and making that the heel against, I think it was Sin Cara and I think also a babyface Del Rio at that time and any, any Mexican luchador and having the heel be the like, get out of our country. You're taking our jobs character. And all of a sudden the foreigners were the heroes where we were like, well, if you recall, that was very short. lived. Oh, I know it was short lived, but it was the most memorable. Because they got cheered real fast. Oh, really? I don't remember yeah. that. Oh yeah. I don't remember that. With the combination of Zeb always being a little funny and right. him being charismatic and just like, yeah, that dude's good. And enough people going like that's Dutch Mantel. Fuck. He's great. And Cesaro being really solid in the ring and having a thing where everybody goes, we, the people, it, it turned real fast. Oh, I, yeah. I don't remember. I remember it turning into a baby face shtick, but I don't remember it was just because they were, I felt that it was simply because they finished their heel feuds with they, they Vince ran out of Mexicans essentially. <laughs> And he didn't want to put, he didn't want to just shove. God damn, we could have had a, yeah. a house party of these guys. And meanwhile, the, the poor guy is like, he's like, uh, I don't know. Is there a Dominican wrestler? He's like, can, put a, can you put a mask on and say we're from Mexico? Um, but. Yeah, hold on. The worst wrestlers from some other place. That's in Cara. That's not, uh, that's not a bad sure. guy for That's a bad wrestler. Bad wrestler from, that's foreign, yeah. but not. Uh, but I, I, that's my memory of it. Clearly is wrong is that they just, the, 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 gimmick uh ran its course with the heels they had and then eventually people just were like well we're gonna turn this into a patriotic thing instead of an anti-immigration we're gonna turn it into a 
pro America. They also just got they started getting cheered. Thing. Oh gosh, wrestling is a slippery slope. <laughs> so slippery, um, so slopey. Well, is it? But there's. God, I was to say, is, do you want to wrap this up with any of any favorites, any favorite uh, heel wrestler foreigners? Well, you know, I mean, we did a lot of favorites. Sure. Um. So I don't know if we have to go to the other side. Uh, Apollo side Cruz <laughs> with a with a accent for some reason. I mean, so is Kofi, right? <laughs> well, Kofi, at least Kofi started. <laughs> With the accent and then dropped it. We gave the guy an accent. Hey, everybody's got an accent. Everybody does have an accent. That's true. So he had one and then he got another a bumper sticker once. Um, yeah, I mean, we did a lot of, 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 of favorites here. Um, I'd say I, I'd go the other route. I go one that I feel like just one that was disappointing where it, it was a story. It's a starting point, but it's not the ending point. I still feel bad for this dude. I always, I check in every so often and I look to see what's happening. But Jinder Mahal. Oh, yeah. Jinder, it's, it was still one of the most unique and fun, interesting things. The WrestleMania Business Summit that I got to go to um, the year, I'm trying to remember what WrestleMania that was. But it was, it was the one where afterwards that's when gender won the title and everything like it was that year right. after mania um, you mean yeah yeah at that and, backlash and we thought it was going to be before that gender won the battle royal right won the title backlash yeah and yeah, then yeah. lost the belt to stuff with shinsuke it, and all, they, it was a it was a they're telling all the people with all their partners and all these business people and then fucking dale and i are sitting there going like he 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 we know what they're gonna book for the next right. year that it was an international initiative right. And they're talking about the markets and what we're going to do in the global outreach. And here are the countries watching and there's the percentages and this, that, the other. And gender is a major factor of that. Yeah. That's why gender was booked to win because like, look, we're going to sell the WWE network yeah. to yeah. India in a big fucking That's way. That's a huge market. We're gonna, and we're going to do it with this guy because this guy is of Indian descent. So like, we're going to, we're going to run with him. We've got two li- other tiny dudes who's going to like be with him. And then we're going to call that that big headed guy uh, you just bring him in just, you know, to to rubber stamp and go like, see, Kali's I mean, here he's too. He's a huge star in India. Kali is a, a Labona fide superstar there. L- a bona fide. And and I don't even know. I don't even know that he's a murderer. We nobody. Yeah. Nobody knows that. That's an oopsie. No. <laughs> That's like all the Punjabi oopsie. Yeah, it's a Punjabi oopsie. Doesn't count. You get one Punjabi oopsie. <laughs> oh, that's inappropriate. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, he, he, another guy who like did everything was asked of him. I, we were doing the show at the time. Like I think we were really starting getting legs with the show and like, uh, breaking down the shows in a more constructive way, and. I was so disappointed, not in him, because I felt like he was doing everything I was told, but he couldn't get past the one note of, I'm, my people are better than your people. Right. India is the greatest country in the world. I'll show you. And that was it. It was just one note and it never rose above that. It never talked about his family. never talked about, it never got layered. It never. I mean, yet think about, grew. think about what they would do with Roman and the bloodline. There's yeah. no reason why you couldn't have, obviously maybe there isn't as much of a lineage with like the Anawai family being a part of it, but still like there's something to pull. There's a history and, and a truth that they could have let the man live instead of making it so one note. I think for a, a brief while they attempted to like allow a little bit of the spirituality. He was doing the thing like with his hand and I don't remember exactly what it was, but he was attempting to bring in like part of the culture. That's not just, you know, we're, it we're better been. than you. It just wasn't but in the it, promos. It wasn't, connecting. it wasn't in the interviews. Yeah, it wasn't connecting. The audience didn't care. Unfortunately, he felt very much like a puppet right. that, Hey, you work out, you do all the stuff, you do the match. We trust you to do the yeah. match and you're doing very well. 
but we need you to say exactly what the company line is right. all the way through and stay within these parameters. Well, look, we pull up the bowling bumper, so you can't make a gutter ball. You're okay. Right. Um, and there was no chances, and it, I didn't want it to go off the rails and then something like super anti-America. No. And we'll, you know, I hate you. I hate you. But it just didn't feel like he got to do anything that was uniquely him right. to define a WWE championship run. It wasn't the secondary championship no. where they're like, ah, eh, whatever. That guy can win that. And we'll do right. whatever. He won the WWE title, and that's still a big and deal I think at the time. Was the Universal around yet? I think this was pre-Universal, if I'm not mistaken, like the year before it. I don't know anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I can't speak. Whatever to he that. well, whatever Jinder was doing in uh, mid 2017, whatever wherever he was in that arc and story made him Alexandra's favorite wrestler. <laughs> for quite a while she, that was she that was that was her guy and they never picked it no, back up with him no. he never got to do anything again it was never like now i'll speak on what had happened or the corporation did this right. or they held me down or he never got to rise to that again when you've already put him in that spot and people already believed right. i don't understand because especially when he still works there if you're like oh he doesn't fucking work here anymore because right. he did horrible stuff or he was so difficult to work with right. can't imagine ever doing shit with him again he still works there. You established it. Yeah. I think Jinder did it. He started what was the evil foreigner, but didn't actually get to keep it going. And I think that ultimately that's why it fell flat because they never trusted him to go further. He only played the evil foreigner. Yeah. You think at the end of the day it's because he was Canadian? Oh no, is that where he's hey, from? He's Canadian. They're all Canadian. Um oh no, I I a hundred percent. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree. Like, and gender is one of those people who I think can still do it. Like, if you like, it, it's not completely in the rear view with him yet. I know that he's a little older now, but like, he's serviceable. He's, he's gonna get you yes. enough of what you want. He, he may not be giving you a match of the year and any of that, but he's gonna get you the reactions. But, he's gonna get you. He's you believe him. He's a fucking gigantic know. man. He's like Seamus and all the other ones. Where it's just like. What the fuck are you eating? And You're huge. When he came back and he had that beard and the like, the sort of like, you know, shoulder length, like when he would wet his hair, he had such a great look. And he's got like, whatever the performance is in his eyes, we always talk about how like being able to connect with the wrestler when they look at you, like he has that. It's just let him do something. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, let him grow his hair. Let him grow his hair back out too a little bit. The bald, bald gender ain't a, ain't a look in my opinion. Um, Michael Lucas says uh, yep. the Universal Championship was on so, Raw. Gender was so on it SmackDown. Did exist by that point, uh, as uh, Scott Narver likes to say, time is a fat circle. Um, mm. Well, um, listen. At the end of the day, foreign bad guy wrestler A plus. Um, there has been some greats. There's been some duds. There's been a lot of duds we didn't talk about, but I feel like oh, we've sure. covered we've covered many nations today. We covered almost a league of nations. Uh, well. We didn't get, we didn't get, uh, to not do so would be un-American. Hey, I see what you did there. Where is the place that we've never, where, what's the new, like, oh, we need a heel wrestler, foreign wrestler from this Australia. Place. I was going to say the same thing, Australia. But I think we have that now in that guy that you and neither of you and I know there's an American, uh, buddy Murphy, no, uh, chat, help us out here. He's the new guy who is very, uh, forget Grayson yes, Waller. Grayson Waller on WWE. He, he is our our didgeridoo. Yes, he's our didgeridoo. Um, I don't know that it's gonna work. I don't know either. I've never I've never seen him. Do you want, I've I've heard the name, but I've never seen it. Do you want to know what I think so. is? Uh, you want to know what country I think is prime for a good bad guy wrestler? Bra sure. Brazil. Could you imagine someone out there doing like capoeira? While we're trying, while they're trying to have a wrestling match, and the good guy trying to catch them, it'd be obnoxious. Super obnoxious, that. sexy dance fighting. Could be. Too See, sexy. Mike Lucas says Bronson Reed, but his, but he has more of a gimmick than just being Australian, though. In my opinion, is he New Zealand or Australian? He's Australian, I think. Although now you may be second guess myself, but I think he's Australian. Darn right. I think he's Australian. Oh yeah, he's Australian. Um, okay. 
Mike Lucas says Sweden. But he doesn't have a boomerang. Mike, he doesn't have a hat with the one side folded how up. How are we like, supposed to know? I don't know. Mike Lucas says Sweden. A sweet. We don't have a, We need a Swedish heel. That is a great one. Think about all the stereotypes that we have for Sweden, all the weird type, of, like Flula Blorg. I don't even know where he's from, but he could probably play a character like that. Well, that's the thing. It can't just be from right. there. We can't like have a Cesaro where it's like, yeah, we know he's Swiss, right. but they have to come in with it and be defined yes. by it. So it's like, yeah, we have the Australian wrestler here and there, but it's not, I wanna, not who I they want are. I want a borderline racist 1990s SNL character. That's what I want in my heel wrestler. I have to learn at a base of like what they're all yes. about by what they come out yes. with. Yes. I want to learn your culture. Antarctica? Is there a section of Antarctica? I mean, I don't, was Glacier from there? Oh, the Arctic Circle, maybe? Um, anyways, Germany. all right. Well, um, it's time to crown a, a PWP champion. Um, I think there are only Americans in this char, so I don't think we're going to have a heel Can foreigner. Speak to that? Is that true? I think so. I mean, I have to pull up the. We've got the, no Mickey Bell. Mickey, well, Mickey, I, I don't know if he's in there uh, currently, but I know. Yeah, I wasn't uh, trying to blow up anybody's spot here. He speaks. He speaks uh, Gibraltarese. Gibraltese. So. Um. Uh, if you don't know what this battle royal is, well, uh, welcome to the show because we talk about it all the goddamn time. <laughs> you know what it is. We're gonna pick a champ for the month of August, and that champ gets to uh, pick a watch along match. Uh, for us to enjoy or not enjoy over on the watch along Wednesday series, you get a uh, free item of your choosing from the shop uh, and your name and lights on the discord. And at the very yeah. top of each and every one of these uh, uh, live streams, as you can see, I'm currently pointing, I believe if I'm not mistaken to current champ, Gilbert short, AKA Goliathon. Uh, he has a uh, uh, reigned well, Fantastic championship run. There were ups. Might still be raining. There were ups. There were downs. He cut some great promos. He put on some great matches. There it is. The Jar Opalskis. Without further ado, I think I got one. And new PWP champ, Alice Raider, a.k.a. Invasion. Evasion. Wow. Who's here live with us? Well, wow, it's rare that happens. A lot of times people always miss when they win. Alice Raider. Well, yeah, because the, the champs, they they get they get comfortable. They start putting their hands behind their head. They kick their feet up on their desk and they're like, I got this. I don't need to go to live chant. Uh the, the champs just reign. I'm good. I'm fine. And then you get too cocky. You get too cocky. Alice Raider, congrats on winning the PWP championship for the month of August. Let me add it to our list here and take a look at our history. Our PWP championship history. Let's see here. All right. I'm trying to figure out Alice Raider. Looks like maybe only, I, I say only, this is Three her, times? only her second championship. Long overdue. Mm. Long overdue. The luck and, of the jar has not been kind to you. And uh, recently, we just featured uh, Alice's pick of a watch long in our, in our main oh, show. Oh, right. So we did the Thunderdome wait, that match. Means, Cause that's, that's how good of a match. I was going to say, that is. means that she's, if she's only ever won once, that was her only ever championship watch long. And it was so good that we were like, well, this is the one we're going to feature. <laughs> we need an off week. Um, yeah. So good on you. I look forward to seeing. Uh, what you come up with for us. <laughs> she says, I'm a working champion. Let the open challenge begin. I don't think that's, that's exactly how it works, but maybe I'll allow it. What if, what if I say sure. And then next week we roll it again and then she loses her championship. <laughs> be careful what you wish for Alex. Oh my God. If we had an open challenge, that'd be chaos. Um, uh, well, there you have it, uh, ladies and gents. Congrats. Uh, congrats. Thanks to everybody who continues to show your support by being championship Palskis. We know that that is a, you know, a, a hefty price to pay every month for your support, and we appreciate those of you who go deep into the wallet to become championship Palskis. Uh, we're going to go see what the hotline has in store for us 
uh, Scott Narver, say goodbye to the live stream. Bye, live stream. This is super fun, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for joining us. 747-666-5606. That's the number of the Pro Wrestling Palski's hotline. You can also send a voice memo uh, on ye old telephone recordings to, what? to hotline at pwpalskis.com. Hotline at pwpalskis.com if you want to just mail in a, uh, a voice recording uh, if you don't like listening what? to our outgoing message every time you call. Which, honestly, uh, you're wrong if that's the case because it's fantastic. Scott, you want to see what the hotline has in store for us today? Yeah. I hoped you would. Hey, all this is spits of retribution, and I was just calling. I was having uh, some fun fantasy booking ideas, and this might be stupid, might not, but hey, that never stopped the WWE from putting an idea into action. What about a referee who becomes obsessed with not getting knocked out during the match, but having it keep happening, just maybe like a little couple of times, like this couldn't go on forever. Picture a scenario where... Decent baby face, white and neat baby face, fights a seated rival, then their match, referee gets knocked out, uh, baby face gets the pin, but doesn't count because ref's not there. Uh, heel ends up winning the match after the ref is revived. And, you know, like the next night on the show, baby face comes out and goes, like, I had you beat, everybody saw it, the fans saw it, I saw it. Heel comes out and goes, yeah, but the ref didn't see it. And that's what matters. Then have the baby face confront the ref and just be like, man, or have the ref just apologize to the baby face. Like, hey, I'm sorry. Um, baby face, like, hey, it happens. Just don't let it happen again. And then you've kind of got like a rematch and that ref comes out. And this ref now is like maybe, I don't know, wearing a motorcycle helmet or something just to try to keep being knocked out. Yeah, fun idea. Stupid idea. I was curious on your thoughts. If you could think of anywhere to take it. Anyway, hope you all are having a good day. Take care. Bye. Mass Llama, a.k.a. Spitz. Um, this is a fun idea. I, I want to hear the pitch to Vince or Triple H and then the lack of confidence at the end from right, Spitz. Yeah. Go like, but I don't know. Fun idea? Fun I also, idea? what I love about Mass Llama is, and I can tell that he's like a, he, he's a, he's a, a nerd after my own heart because he gets stuck in the weeds like I do. He could have just said, hey, funny idea, a ref who's afraid of getting knocked out because it happens. And then he could have moved on. But instead, he said, he said, like, for example, and then he had this very meticulously thought out, detailed step by step process that he bails on entirely at the end. And that's what. The, OK, so then here's the, here's the asshole part of me. Yeah. Then that that interjects because he tell he says the initial idea and I go, oh, that's really interesting. And then my mind went. Boom, got an idea. And then I started <laughs> too. I did the harnessing thing. the idea and I go, oh, he's still talking. Ugh, I'm not listening. I don't know. And then the Eddie Bales, I go, well, if he's not even going to stand by his idea. All right. Long story short, uh, guy keeps getting knocked out and decides to wear a helmet. There you go. There's I summed up. Mass yeah. Lama's. I, all right. So you and I have talked about Mass how. Mass Lama has very fun ideas. Uh, stand you and behind I talk- your ideas, Mass Lama. Yeah. Uh, confidence is everything. You and I have talked about how we both like the idea of like every now and then a referee having a character trait or a story or or like throw it in there. This is really fun. I love the idea of a ref who just starts getting afraid of doing his job because it's a little bit too close to the action. It's dangerous. It's a dangerous place to be. Uh, Especially if his fear Makes it so that he doesn't do his job well. Maybe it costs somebody something. Maybe uh, an Adam Pierce style character or, or authority, authority figure has to reprimand them, mm-hmm. write them up. Write them up. Demerits. A demerit of some sort. And then wrestling needs demerits. <laughs> I mean, it has merits. There's yeah. merits fucking galore. Yeah. Start with the demerits. You can't, I mean, there, you need the yang if you're going to have the yin. There, there, and you the need jimmy a and the wang. Now there's, now there's a wrestler. If you're going to have the yang, you got to have the jimmy and the wang. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, what's your idea? So I, I like the idea very much, and it made me think of, okay, so the 
the ref is basically going like, look, I gotta, I gotta, why are they scared? That's, right. that's why I ask myself, like, why is the ref scared? Because they got a family because they got kids. They need to be able to work long term. And I thought, what better way to reintroduce another band member of the three man band that we've been talking about? He Slater back into the mix. Hey, I'm back. I was spending time with my kids and I just, I got to get back to work. I spent all my money. Um, so I'm here to work, but I don't think I should be wrestling these days. I think I'd rather be a ref gets in refs, a match refs, two matches third week. Uh Oh, main event collides into him, gets knocked out. Doesn't get back into things, gets knocked loopy. And then like, Hey, next week you ready to ref again? Like I can't doctor says I got to sit out. I don't know if I can be a ref anymore. I'm really scared. I gotta, I gotta spend time with my kids. I gotta make sure I can keep refing. And then he's really scared and he can't, he's like ducking out of the way all the time because like he's gotta, I gotta keep this job. I gotta keep refing. So he's always scared and running on the way. And then eventually that's what gets Heath back in the ring. He gets knocked down one time, but then he gets back up. He's fired. And then he starts fighting everybody. This is Heath Slater and he can't be stopped. You just want Heath Slater to come back and wrestle. That's well, who else want, has like, kids? Honestly, that's true. No one ever has ever done anything wrestling with their children. And then he can finally get back at Brock Lesnar when Brock said, "I don't give a shit about your kids." <laughs> your kids. Um, thank you so much for the call, Mass Lama. Thank you so much for bringing Heat Slater back into our lives, Scott Narver. Um, if and you want to again, Mass Lama, wonderful ideas. Stand fantastic. behind them. Um. Uh, if you want to call the hotline and put up your ideas and stand behind your own ideas, it's 747-666-5606. Remember memo. when we had a whole hotline episode, how fun that was? Yeah, let's do Flood that again. Us. That Flood was great because we, we didn't have to come up with a theme for an episode. Mm, yep. <clears throat> but I In two still, weeks, hotline I would so love fun. to do another hotline. I would love to do another hotline heavy episode next week. Um, be great. Or in two weeks. I don't know how time works for us. But you know what? Call the Questions, hotline. comments, thoughts. Hey, th- w- I here's a question for the hotline. Here's what I want to know. Wait, Maybe. is this your hotline call? Are you calling the hotline right now? Yeah. <laughs> bring, bring. Jake Lloyd Bacon talking too long. Hey, that's not how it is. Do I talk too long? <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what our outgoing message is anymore. I should look it's, at that. It's, it's a little bit. We should re-record that next time. Okay. You're here. Oh, like the the couple who leave yeah. the answer machine message. Like, Listen. You reach Jake and Scott. We have, uh, Co- we have Koi and I do that on the Koi Cast hotline, and it's obnoxious. But people seem to like it. I wouldn't, but they do. All right. Well, I want in on that one. Add me into the Koi one. Okay. Uh, I want to know. This is a this is a fantasy scenario. So we, we love our fantasy booking. And maybe Jake, maybe you can, if you want to answer it now, you can answer it now. Or if you want to answer it, if people respond to this call uh, to action that I'm putting out there, we talked about last week, WrestleMania is going to be in Philadelphia. It's two nights. What match will get you to fly to Philly for the main event of WrestleMania 40? I want to know what that match is that people would go, well, no, I'm just going to watch it at home. Well, I feel like I couldn't miss that. I'd have to see it live, WrestleMania 40. This is what I would want it to be. They would they would drop everything and go. That's a good question. Um, I'm not gonna I don't have an answer. My answers are all dead. Fine, you can take the time. Who doesn't want to watch that? (laughs) Um All right, Saudi Prince. All right. (laughs) Uh, that'll do it for this week's program. Hey, head on over to pwpalskis.com. Pwpalskis.com. Snag yourself um, some sweet, sweet PWP merchandise over in the shop there. Get yourself a mask. Uh, I still said mask. We're still doing that. Some people get yourself a T-shirt, a mug, which is the word I meant to say, and some hats. There's a brand new PWP hats there. You can also find the link to the Discord there, which is a completely free online community. Great place to hang out and talk wrestling with some wrestling friends. Great place to talk wrestling while you watch it live. That's always a blast. Uh, there you can find links to the socials at PW Palski is in all social media. I'm at Jake Lloyd Bacon. He's at Scott Narver. There you can also find a link to the Patreon, which is the best way to support this program. Um, uh, your few bucks a month uh, gets you a whole lot um, from access to the live shows to the watch along Wednesday series each and every week. There's hundreds of those now. Oh my God, I've been doing them forever. 
The um, second that you sign up for all this too, you have access to all things in the back catalog. Yep. And absolutely. on top of that, one thing that uh that Jake is uh done that is exceptional because it's something that I wouldn't have thought of or understood, but Jake, uh please give the explanation again of like it shows up in its own RSS feed. Yes, if you um sign up to become a, a pro wrestling uh Palski patron. Well, we usually never say it full like that. We usually say PWP Palski. Yeah. Anyways, uh, if you sign up, um, you get your own personal RSS feed as long as you are active as a patron, which means uh, if you go and you copy that, it's, it'll just be in one of your tabs that you have there on Patreon. You can enter that RSS feed into any podcast player. So if you listen on Apple Podcasts, if you listen on Spotify, it doesn't matter where you listen. You can enter that RSS feed and then listen to the Watch Along Wednesday or any any bonus audio that comes through as its own separate show right on your podcast player. You don't have to go to patreon.com and then click on the list. You don't have to listen so to it. So wait a your- second. I, I got to go. I'm on Patreon. I got to go listen to all your shit on Patreon. What nope. I like, I heart radio for there some reason. Just head on over to uh, your your settings in our in you know uh, I guess where it is where you follow. I'm sure that there's a link that just says like get my RSS feed, copy paste it to wherever you want, and uh, it has this little artwork there. You can see the and not a lot of people maybe even realize there's a custom artwork for the exclusive patron only uh, uh, pod feed. Um, and it goes and yeah, right so, to the audio platform that I enjoy listening to and have all my absolutely. shit on. And it'll automatically upload every time there's a new episode, just like any other podcast. The convenience. See what Jake did for you? He yeah. didn't make it, so you had to jump around and everything. You just got to do oh. one little, you just got to add it in. You just got to and, slip that in. And then when you stop being a patron for whatever reason, because Scott made you angry by saying the wrestler you love the most is bad, well, oh, yeah. then you just you immediately lose access to the feed. So it's great for everybody. Yeah. See? I, D- Jake made it easy for you. All you had to do was slip it in, and then I made you pull out. For a little bit of money. Yeah. Just a little bit of money. And you're the, the, you're the one that feels dirty for it. We feel nice and clean. Um, speaking of clean patrons, we need to thank our current Pro Wrestling Palskis. Oh, yes. The only show that gives out retribution and currently maximum male model names. We're going to be back uh, next week with a new maximum male model name. So be excited for that. Uh, so in the meantime, and in between time, thank you to AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary, a.k.a. Matrice69, Alex Pierce, a.k.a. Figs, a.k.a. Zitoys, Alice Raider, a.k.a. Invasion, a.k.a. Evasua, a.k.a. The New PWP Champ, Andrew Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate, a.k.a. At You Detest, Brian Holloway, a.k.a. Thunder Void, Curtis Mason, a.k.a. Hurtis, Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, a.k.a. Battle Underus, Matt Slama, a.k.a. Spitz, a.k.a. Jacare Lover, Miguel Diaz, a.k.a. Bipod, a.k.a. Too Much Husk, Mike Lucas, a.k.a. Hackensack, a.k.a. Luger Testicle, Suicide, a.k.a. A.k.a. Tim Bemis, a.k.a. War Trek, Tim Redbeard, a.k.a. Blood Fuzz, a.k.a. Blue Diffuse, Tom Hader, a.k.a. Cupid, and Tony Griggs, a.k.a. Big Griggs, a.k.a. Grand Grisoire. Thanks to each and every one of you for your continued support of this program. We could not, would not, won't not do it without you. Um, we hope you had Slip fun not. today. Slipknot. Uh, we hope you had fun. Um, we sure did, because it's always a blast hanging out with you, Pro Wrestling Palskis. <laughs> Hey everyone, Jake Lloyd Bacon here, along with Paul Bianchi and Alexandra Hoy. Hey, we all host different shows on Dragon Wagon Radio. We do, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Not at all. We are here to talk about Dungeons and Dragon Wagon. A narrative podcast series in which we venture into a mythical land for a D&D inspired role playing game. Alexandra and I are joined by Matt Hinksman and a very special guest of Quest for each chapter of an epic saga in which we must take on the roles of half-orcs, dark elves, and more as we fight our way through a fantastical land of peril, drama, and often hilarity. All of which is controlled by me, the Dungeon Master, and the player's chance rolls of the die. And our show is for everyone. Even if you know nothing about D&D or role-playing games, we've got you covered. That's right. Our game sessions are highly edited, 
easy to follow, sound designed from top to bottom, and completely immersive. Yeah, our episodes sound more like a well-produced radio drama than an RPG show. So what are you waiting for? Join the adventure on Dungeons & Dragon Wagon at dndwpod.com or wherever you find great podcasts. It's Dragon Wagon.